Now that we've calculated our centroid or located where our centroid is, what we want to do in this problem is calculate the moment of inertia of this channel cross section about the horizontal about its horizontal axis. And I'm going to call this the xx axis. And what we want to do here is apply the parallel axis theorem, which looks like this. And this equation just says that it's the sum of all the individual or manageable areas or the elements, the moment of inertia of each element about, its, about itself or its own axis, plus the area times the distance from the centroid of the entire cross section to the centroid of that area squared. And the best way to go about this is really to continue this table from up here down below. So I've brought the drawing down. I got to make this table. And this table is going to have, and it's going to be very similar. I'm going to have the, the areas or the elements that I've broken up my cross section into. And then I'm just going to have columns that essentially match the parallel axis theorem. This will be, this first column will be the moment of each element, moment of inertia of each element about itself, about a horizontal axis. The area of each element, which I already calculated up above, so I'm not even really worried about that. And here, this DYI. This will be the calculation, this AI times DYI squared. And, and so to do this, you know, the first thing we want to do is calculate the moment of inertia of each of these elements, or these areas 1, 2, and 3, about its hor own horizontal axis. So that's pretty straightforward. Each of these will be, let's see, for area 1, it'll be 1 12th base, which is 20, times the height, which is 150 cubed. The units of this is millimeters to the fourth. And the number that you'll get for this thing is, oh, it's it's, a good, it's usually a good idea to use scientific notation if you're doing calculating moments of inertia. And this is going to be 5.625 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. The, for area 3, because it's the same as area 1, this was also going to be 5.625 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. For this area 2, this yellow orangish thing here, this is going to be 1 12th base, which is 160 times the height, which is 20 millimeters cubed. And we will get 0 0.1067 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. So that's a pretty straightforward part. You, normally you can find these equations, this 1 12th base times high cubed, uh, one for a circle, whatever, a triangle, blah, blah, blah. Right? You can find those in the back of a, a textbook or online somewhere. The dyi represents the distance from the centroid of an area to the centroid of the entire cross section. So really, this distance right here would represent dy2. This distance, this vertical distance right here, would represent dy1. And similarly, this distance right here would represent dy3. And instead of trying to calculate that all out again, what that really is is this is just y bar minus yi. Yes. And so all you got to do is remember that this right here was y bar 97.61. So the dy1 would be 97.61 minus uh, y1, which we had previously even calculated up here, which was 75 millimeters. And this comes out to 22.61 millimeters. If I go through the same process right here, this was this would be 97.61 millimeters minus 140 millimeters, which will give me negative 42.39. And the negative doesn't matter. If it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter because it eventually gets squared later on in the process that you follow. And then here, this is going to be the same value as area 1 here. So this is also 22.61. And then if you go through the math, you know, you go and take this area values, take these area values up here, this area value, and multiply it by this dyi squared. Obviously, you got to square that first. Then you will get the values associated with this last column, 3 thousand times 22.61 squared, which will give us 1.534 times 10 to the 6. And notice here, this is also units of millimeters to the fourth. If I go through and I, again, complete the calculation associated with the others, and now all I've got to do is match up the parallel axis theorem, which means I have to take the sum of this first column, 11.3557 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. And if I add up, boom, 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 which for this term right here, this will be 
0.818 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. And last but not least, if I add these two numbers together, this will give me IX, which is going to be 20.175 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. And that would be our answer for the moment of inertia of this channel shape about its horizontal axis. All right, so hopefully that gave you some insight to the process. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I will try to reply below. Take it easy. Set you free!